for tapping rubber. But you can see at my back, it's all pitch darkness. Still very dark. And I'm ready with my headlight. So let's go. Come on, let's go. Hello guys. It's mid-November and really very cold here outside. I am already in the plantation site. I'm on my headlight right now. And so today I'm going to show you two kinds of techniques of tapping rubber. One on the upper part of the tree and the other at the bottom of the tree. So two different techniques are involved and I have got a special knife here which is called Jebong look uh, this is how this is how it is constructed in angle so look at this tree the tapping panel right here the tapping panel is uh, at least two and a half feet above ground and I'm going to show you one kind of tapping technique here and uh, let's check out another tree this tree the pole is just sitting above the soil you, you can see only some inches left that's the final tapping area and after that we are actually going to change the panel right this side it's still virgin bark here not done anything so we are going to shift this side how that's done that also I'll show you and for now first of all uh, let's see how it's done if the tapping panel is above ground around two feet or two and a half feet uh, on the top then how it's done let's see it so this is Jebong you can see the tapping panel area so when you are tapping this kind of tree then you actually will have to do it this way first of all we catch the jabong nicely with our right hand and then the left hand will support it this way okay so this is the way do it first and then do it this way and it's ready you can see the latex dripping drop by drop that's how it is Clean the bowl if you have to. Very fast. Let it coagulum from the previous day. And just don't throw this away because this is also collected later on. We just let it dry here. And this is called scrap rubber. Everything is valued in case of rubber. We call rubber white gold also. Uh, first of all, try to take out the coagulum strap. This one. This. You don't throw this away. Just keep it. Let it dry. And now since it's almost touching the ground our tapping panel is too low so you cannot tap this way otherwise your jabong is going to hit the ground and it will be very difficult for you to do that so the reverse way we are going to do it on the higher level we can do it this way upside down now we have to do the opposite way from here towards the top okay so slightly slanting this is how we will start it just take the jabong this way not this way 
because it won't work this way it will work so just do this this way and then the rest can go like this now you must be very careful when tapping rubber trees you have to preserve the bark the bark is the actual thing from which we collect the rubber latex you can see it's oozing out and then it's dripping drop by drop so that will be collected and this will be almost full by noon so what happens is when you cut too deep you're going to wound the tree that's because the thin layer which is attached with a hardwood which we call cambium that layer will be cut out and then it will be difficult for the tree to to rebark again so preserving the bark is very important we cut the outer layer and the soft bark but we don't cut the cambium layer so that's how bark will grow again and then after finishing this side when we go to the other side of the tree and finish that one also this part is going to replenish and so here we can come back again after some years to tap this side of the bark this side of the tree so that's how it is and I'm going to show you some more one or two more trees how to tap and uh, time matters I have to do it quickly as much as possible it's not for the sake of doing video um, I actually do it every day and so let's get going one more tree here position the bowl That's how you just need about eight nine seconds to complete one tree during tapping. You can see that this tree, the panel, is almost finishing. I am left with only this much. I think so. I can cut this much only, about one one inch, and after that it won't be possible because I will not be able to position the bowl right here. So it's almost finishing and that's why what i would do before i simply stop this one i'll keep on tapping here also and i'll open a new panel this side this side of the bark the opposite side of the tree and this will actually help me while well, this get started flowing well I'll be harvesting this side also and this will slowly increase in uh, the amount of latex so today I'm going to show you how to open a new new tapping panel just stay with me all right I've got a, a rope here plastic rope a cup hanger and the cup itself and uh, this one is the spout so these are the materials which are required so i'm going to do that take the rope first of all how long you need you just measure this out and as much as you need you can cut this much is required for me and i'm going to cut it right here Now, I need to make a drain here. How much is required? And then start it right here. So, so this much height is okay. And I'll start in this way. about 45 degree slanting now you can see the sap is already dripping I'll use this pouch 
to just dip it a little bit the bark take the string or the rope the cup hanger and tie it nicely position the bowl and whatever I've just started I'll repeat one second here you can see the latex dripping fast so that's how it is and down here I'm gonna do again clean the bowl take out the coagulum strap this is called coagulum strap Uh, take a look at this tree also I'm tapping here at the ground level also and you can see I have started a panel this side also you can see this panel is a few days older about 10-15 days I have tapped here so that's how it is you can see it's early morning now you can see the red sun already coming out and hear the birds already singing see the red sun through the betel nut trees okay guys it's already bright light I'm almost finishing the taping starting at 4, 4 a.m. in the morning and with this bright light I don't need the headlight anymore so I have switched it off I have muffled myself like this because it's really cold mid November Oof, you can see the frost coming out of my mouth remove the coagulum strap if possible if not then you can carefully cut it you can clean the bowl that's collected from the previous day's paper and start doing this way from top to bottom that's it and you might be wondering how thick you have to cut see it's very minimum um, say 1.5 to 2 mm thickness you have to cut not more than that otherwise your bark is going to finish very soon uh, this will at least take five to five and a half years to complete one side so cut more you finish the quicker so that's what is important and remember not to cut the cambium layer this cambium layer is the thin covering between the soft bark and the hard wood so if you cut the cambium layer the tree will face difficulty in rebarking itself so that's important uh, rebarking is required because when you finish this panel you will go to the other side you'll finish that one you'll come back here for the second time and start tapping so that's how and that's why it should be very carefully done now if you don't take care of the tree while tapping this is what it's going to happen look at this it's been long time that this this portion has not been able to rebark because the cambium was completely cut out from the bark so that's it that was because of the tapper who 
did that I don't know intentionally or unintentionally but it happened uh, I did not do that so at the same time this tree is also suffering from tapping panel dryness TPD or uh, we call it brown bust also even if you try to tap this tree this way that way this side that side you know it's not going to bring out any latex that's called tapping panel dryness and you should be aware of this kind of thing if you are allowing other laborers to to work in your plantation and if they are doing such kind of thing to your tree then you should be aware of such kind of uh, activity so that's it you know rubber also suffers from some deficiencies of fertilizer and uh, important nutrients now you see this tree doesn't ooze out any sap now you will not obtain any latex from this if you try you might see this see that see the color it has become brown and this particular disease is called brown bust or tapping panel dryness that means even if you try to tap you are not going to get any latex from this tree so the latex flow is blocked because of the fungus mm -hmm. over the years this has been tapped up to this portion but when brown bust affected this uh, we tried to open a new panel this side on the top the other side but after tapping it some time like this was tapped for, for a year probably and then this was for two or three months like that and then it stopped flowing so when it happens it's no use tapping this kind of tree you have to completely stop it and then there is another problem you can face you can see that the jabong the knife that you are going to use in this kind of affected tree and you are again tapping with the same knife another tree then there's a problem that this jabong is going to carry the fungus and it's going to affect the other tree also so that's a serious uh, problem now, there's a treatment for this and that can be obtained only from Malaysia uh, India has not imported this particular fertilizer there's a company called grow yield in Malaysia they particularly produce a biochemical fertilizer called complete nutritional liquid fertilizer uh, with that it is being healed so I tried to bring that imported last year but I failed so I'll try later on again if anyone gets it if anyone imports it and happens to watch this video please write in the comment below in the comment box I'll try to contact You can now see that the bowl is almost full and it's still dripping drop after drop so we're gonna wait till noon until it is fully collected and here's another and here on the upper part also uh, you can see this is still dripping deep deep um, so I'm gonna replace this bowl because I know during my absence uh, this bowl is going to get overflowed so to avoid that I'm just replacing a bowl I'll just keep it safe 
in the ground and I'll use this bowl to collect again all right I'll do that okay I've done it I've just changed it you can see now drop of the drop it is collected and I have placed it safely here on the ground and nothing is going to happen to it so I can wait till noon until it is fully collected still flowing all right guys uh, tapping is complete you can see light all around me and at my back is the plant is inside you can see all around so the plant is inside you can see and uh, actually I let the half of the whole plantation divide it into two halves and uh, tap only 50% uh, of that and the rest 50% is done on the next day so that means I can have a chance to let it sit for one day so I do it every day but the plants are allowed to rest let's see we'll wait till noon uh, so that all the latex is collected in the bowl and we will collect it later on and process it so I'm going to show you how to process uh, from start to finish I've shown you the tapping part actually rubber tapping is done in the early hours of the morning because uh, by the time the third jet power that means through which the latex or the sap is oozed out from the bark of the rubber tree so that's really really great during these hours and so you will have a better latex flow so you can harvest more rubber in the morning so that's the tip and now I'm going to go home and during the day it will be collected after some hours of allowing the latex to drip in the bowl it is collected in gallons time for collection right now it's about 12 30 12 30 pm and i'm collecting the latex
now it's brought home for processing and that's how uh, first of all I'm spreading the tray and pouring one liter of water in each tray now I'm going to pour the latex two liters each in a tray Now I'm going to mix it with formic acid for the coagulation of the latex in the tree. This is formifan, uh, formic acid. This is mixed in water already. Uh, 10 liters of water in each gallon and we add 200 ml to 300 ml um, formifen in this gallon and uh, this solution is now poured in this tray and it will be nicely mixed about 100 ml solution is added here month of November and at this season the latex contains a very high amount of water and so we have to decrease the amount of water mixed here so one liter water and two liters of latex let me now show you how to mix this is a homemade thing um, homemade gadget this is for the purpose of measuring the amount of formic acid required and pour it like this 100 ml about 100 ml and this is also homemade and this is how you have to mix it up down that's how it is mix it well otherwise your formic acid is not going to mix well the result will be bad shit so in order to make your shit fine of good quality you have to mix it well now after that just check the tray whether it is well positioned otherwise the result will be that your shit is going to be wider in one side and narrower in the other side if required then you have to put some packings in order to adjust it make it fine so that's how I'm putting some packing here so that it is adjusted well check once again if it is okay then it's okay but if it is not okay readjust it again in this case I'm readjusting again check it again well it's fine so keep going with the same process stake the tray one after another and mix it well adjustments are required wherever necessary so
Now the latex processing is complete. I have staked it. One stake here and uh, the other one this side. So the processing is over. Now we will let it sit for about 5-6 hours or uh, overnight. Next morning we are going to um, do it away in the machine. The rolling machine here. Design is cut here, and now you might be um, interested to know how much I earn per day from tapping only about 153s. Uh, guess what? It is valued around 2,500 to 3,000 Indian rupees. Not bad, right? After letting it sit for around five to six hours. See now it's almost ready to be pressed in the machine. See, it has turned like a towel, soft, watery. Then water can be pressed out with the help of the rolling machines. And we have to make it very thin about 3 mm by pressing here several times in this machine and then finally here in this machine now let me show you the rolling part quickly Now you have to press it several times in this rolling machine until you get the desired 3 mm thickness size.
now finally this mission is the ripped one so uh, you have to finally do this in order to make your shit tough and at the same time the ripped marks will drain out the water very quickly so it helps the shit to dry faster that's required this is the final process in the whole process and after that you have to dry it in the sun or put it in the smoke house so in my case uh, since my smoke house is very small I would first of all dry it in the sun for a few days and then I would put it in the smoke house Now, after the rolling process is uh, finished, you have to wash it once in the running water to wash off the uh, remains of formic acid in the shit. Now just let it dry in the sun, hang it on the bamboo bars like this. Now you can see I have completed the process of hanging on the bamboo bars and I let it dry for some days
and it looks white right now but it's going to change to this color uh, when it dries for about one or two days this is the color you can see this you can see are actually um, dried since yesterday and you can see it has quite changed the color from white to uh, brown and after some days it will be uh, good enough to be put in the smokehouse Now this is inside the smokehouse and it's already about two days I let it inside the smokehouse and this is the color you can see it has changed color this is what it happens when you put in the smokehouse I'll still leave it inside the smokehouse for about one day and next day I'm going to put it out uh, since the smokehouse is too small to capacitate all these sheets, you can see there are a lot of sheets outside still drying in the sun. So I cannot accommodate all of them inside the smokehouse. So let it dry in the sun for some days. This is the place how I build the fire. A small cabin is built, firehouse, fireplace, and from the side the smoke is emitted through uh, to the smokehouse. So I have to build the fire here and close that window. I'll let you see the process. Keep watching. You can use the dried rubber scrap to simply light up the fire. Use a lighter to just lit it up and you can build the fire with the help of some firewood. Allow it to burn nicely and later on you can close that window. Now when the fire is ready inside to put out the flame just pull the shutter down it's fine now the flame inside will go away it's no more but the fire is still there inside and it's going to emit full of smoke through the hole and it's going to lead to the box there this box, this is a smokehouse. You can see. This capacitates about 96 sheets. You see this hole? You have to allow the oxygen to pass through so that the fire keeps burning inside but there is no flame left now this is ripped smoked shit uh, I have taken it out from the smokehouse and uh, uh, allowing it to finally dry in the Sun for the final drying and it's ready you can see it's transparent you can see my fingers underneath this is smoked dry shit it's already dried you can see the color and you can see this is really 
really tough now. You can't tear it. Actually, that's how it is. So it's ready now. Now I can stick it and it's ready to be sold. My wife is doing the staking part. You can see the sheets, the quality of the sheet, the color, tan brown. It's finally done ready to be sold uh, it's a little bit more than 50 kilograms here and you can see the rest there in the smoke house that's being smoked right now and also some that is processed today in the tree you can see that My daughter and my wife are picking up the scrap, scrap rubber. Mommy, what is it? What is this? Rubber. 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 